Welcome everyone. Uh, I'm David Weinstein, uh, director of the Center on Japanese Economy and Business uh, at uh, Columbia Business School uh, and the Carl Schaup Professor of the Japanese Economy at Columbia University. We are delighted that you joined our webinar, New Capitalism in Japan, Turning Left or Right. Before turning it over today uh, to our speaker, I just want to give a brief introduction of the center. Uh, CJEB was established in 1986 by Professor Hugh Patrick, and in July of 2019, I became the new director. Our mission at CJEB is to promote knowledge and understanding of Japan's economy and its business systems in an international context. And we continue to pursue this mission with webinars such as our event today, as we've adapted to the current situation uh, surrounding COVID-19. I'm honored to introduce our speaker, Professor Takatoshi Ito, who is the director of our program on public pension and sovereign funds, as well as our associate director of research and a professor at the School of International and Public Affairs. I've known Taka for uh, most, if not all of my professional career, and I count him as a very close friend and wonderful resource on the Japanese economy. Taka is a distinguished economist and scholar with a wide ranging academic and policy expertise. He has taught extensively both in the United States and in Japan at the University of Minnesota, Shitotsubashi University, and at the Graduate School of Public Policy at the University of Tokyo. He's been teaching on the Japanese economy and on Asian financial markets since he came to Colombia. He was president of the Japanese Economic Association in 2004 and has been a research associate at the National Bureau of Economic Research since 1985. Taka also has broad experience in government as a policy advisor. He was appointed to the International Monetary Fund as the senior advisor in the research department from 1994 to 1997 and served as Japan's Minister of Finance, Deputy Vice Minister for International Affairs from 1999 to 2001. He was awarded the Japanese government's National Medal with Purple Ribbon in June of 2011 for his outstanding ac academic achievements. You can read more about him and his achievements in his bio on our website. Taka and his work is invaluable to CJEB, and we are fortunate to have him here with us. This is his seventh annual lecture on the Japanese economy, which has become a cornerstone of our programming as he discusses changes to Japan's economy and economic policies. After his presentation, we will have time for question and answers. Please send your questions through the Q&A feature in Zoom if you have not submitted your questions in advance. But before we start, I want to take a moment to thank our corporate and individual sponsors for the generous donations. These gifts allow us to continue developing and delivering exceptional webinars like this, this one. Without your support, it would be impossible for us to function. Thank you so much. Okay, Taka, I'm gonna turn the mic over to you and look forward to hearing your remarks. Thank you, David. Thank you for kind introduction. And good morning uh, to Japanese audience and good evening uh, uh, for, um, to um, uh, American audience and um, good day somewhere uh, in other countries. So uh, it's my pleasure to uh, give uh, this annual lecture on the Japanese um, uh, economy. And this is to take stock of what is going on in Japan and uh, what we, we should uh, expect in the next um, uh, few months to, uh, uh, to a year. So um, the big news uh, in Japan is that we have a new government, uh, new prime minister and new government. And um, uh, the big headline of the uh, prime minister Kishida is uh, new capitalism. And um, many people wondered when they they heard new capitalism what what it is what 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 is it and uh so 
Now we are seeing some details of what he meant by new capitalism. Uh, for example, his um, uh, State of the Union equivalent uh, speech uh, in the Diet that he laid out the uh, major points. He uh, started the um, Council on the New Capitalism, Realizing New Capitalism. So um, we are now seeing bits and pieces on what he meant by new capitalism. And the first part of my uh, talk today is uh, to try to illustrate uh, what I learned from uh, reading those um, uh, documents and his, speech, his speeches. Then <clears throat> I will turn to a COVID situation because COVID situation is affecting Japanese politics and also economics. So um, I will give the briefing on uh, uh, the Japanese situation of the COVID and um, uh, then go to a more uh, uh, macroeconomic um, uh, policy and uh, see uh, whether we can, you know, I'll give you my views on what, what is going to happen in uh, monetary policy and uh, fiscal policy. So let me share uh, my slides and uh, start from here. So I will, I will explain the uh, uh, new capitalism, then uh, some concrete measures are now coming out then, uh, uh, then uh, um, COVID situation, the monetary policy and fiscal policy. Okay, so um, in his words, that uh, uh, neoliberalism, uh, which is um, asserting everything will work fine with markets and competition, has become mainstream globally since 1980s. However, neo, neo uh, neoliberalism has um, uh, some side effects uh, and like um, uh, causing the inequality, widening the inequality and increasing poverty and uh, too much burden on nature and um, uh, so new capitalism is a capitalism which will try to rectify those problems and emphasizing both uh, growth and uh, redistribution, um, redistribution of the income. And sometimes you, uh, uh, some very careful observer have noticed that uh, in the beginning, when he was you know, running for the job, he was saying redistribution and growth. Now he says growth and redistribution. And this is a bit telling on uh, what he is uh, uh, going to do in, in actual policy. So um, what he has been emphasizing from the very beginning when he was running for the uh, LDP president and then the um, general election, uh, he has been emphasizing this um, uh, uh, so redistribution part, which I called turning left. And first he mentioned the special tax or increasing tax on financial income. But he quickly withdrew that idea uh, before the general election uh, because the uh, stock market had negative reaction. Then uh, he introduced the income support for the uh, family with um, uh, uh, young, young kids. Young, young means 80, 18 years uh, or younger. And this, this is implemented. And he, he is now pushing the uh, wage hike. And he's pushing the big business to give 3% or more uh, wage hike. So we will see whether this will be materialized or not uh, in uh, several months. Now, he also expressed to increase the pay for nurses and care workers 
and uh, kindergarten uh, teachers and so on. So this is uh, um, government controlled, uh, uh, pa partly government controlled uh, ways. So uh, this will happen. Then um, um, another uh, policy which is uh, implemented uh, this week is to uh, try to stop the gasoline price going up uh, beyond above uh, 190 yen per liter. And uh, what's peculiar is that he's giving subsidies to wholesalers, not consumers, but wholesalers in the hope that uh, that would be passed on to the retailers and then to consumer. So I'd say uh, these policies, some of them are kind to a uh, lower income uh, families and uh, some of them are kind to workers, uh, but uh, some of them are a bit questionable in the real um, effects, uh, intended effect uh, could be, uh, could be, could not be uh, materialized. So. These are the, some of the um, policies which are not uh, market-oriented or uh, growth-oriented. Now, as I said, that he is now emphasizing more on the growth strategies. And um, uh, he has actually four points or four pillars uh, on this uh, growth strategy. One is the um, uh, innovation, emphasizing innovation. Of course, innovation uh, will increase the um, productivity and that will result in wage hike. So this is straightforward, uh, straightforward um, uh, policy to, uh, to uh, uh, cause the, um, the um, uh, wage increase, as, uh, resulting wage increase. And I don't see any difference of this policy from, for example, the Abenomics uh, third arrow. Uh, example he, he, he um, uh, points out is the creation of 10 trillion yen uh, in National University uh, Fund. And um, uh, this is um, the, uh, one, one of the, um, uh, uh, his um, uh, efforts to increase the uh, innovation uh, coming from university. Now he's also uh, uh, emphasizing the venture capital. So uh, to try to come up with a policy, there, there, is, there will be a council uh, deliberating on how to make an ecosystem for uh, uh, innovation. So th th this will be interesting, but again, the venture capital has been uh, emphasized since um, uh, economics. The second one is um, uh, interesting, also interesting uh, one, called the Digital Garden City. And uh, Garden City is a translation from uh, Den and Toshi uh, in Japanese. Now, if you don't know the history, um, there is an interesting uh, 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 roots uh, in this uh, uh, garden city, Den Toshi uh, idea. This goes back to a Prime Minister, Ohira, uh, and he mentioned this uh, garden city uh, idea, and um, uh, many people think that comes from the uh, Ebenezer Howard of uh, United Kingdom, uh, back 18, back to uh, 1898, or there is a Forest Hills Gardens in New York, which started uh, 1909. Uh, or you could go back to a uh, uh, Shibusawa's idea in 1922. Now, Ohira was the Prime Minister, but the uh, leader of the faction within LDP which the, um, the uh, Kishida uh, has the uh, lineage from. So um, it is go going back to the factional, uh, 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 factional um, idea 
of uh, this uh, garden city. So what, what is the digital garden city? So digital garden city is to build a 5G network to every town and village so that you could promote uh, remote work, education, medical services, uh, drone delivery, and so on. So basically, uh, this is to, to um, uh, stimulate the economies outside Tokyo. So to make whole Japan uh, uh, access, uh, accessible to, um, to the technology and um, uh, uh, start making businesses uh, uh, using those technology. So I'm not sure this is a left or right, but um, um, try to, uh, try to uh, promote the, uh, try to promote the, um, uh, uh, stimulating the economy uh, in the rural area. Okay, so this is probably very important for the um, uh, politicians to uh, emphasize because you know politicians have to run uh, for the election uh, from every 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 part of the uh, uh, part of the Japan. So this will go very good. Uh, to those um, uh, who live outside uh, Japan and uh, uh, Osaka. Okay, so third one is a climate change problem, uh, and this is nothing new. Uh, this was already um, uh, declared uh, by Prime Minister Suga that carbon neutral by 2050 and um, uh, intermediate um, uh, target of 46% reduction by 20. <clears throat> so, uh, no, no new concrete uh, policy agenda here, um, and um, uh, economists would say, you know, you, we, we wanted to see um, uh, carbon pricing in there, but there is no carbon pricing mentioned. Fourth one is economic security, and this is to make the supply chains robust and uh, basically infrastructure robust. So this is um, uh, in reaction to the supply chain problem, uh, which we found out uh, in the COVID um, uh, recession. And um, uh, the um, danger from the uh, US China uh, economic uh, conflict and we may, the Japan may uh, Japan may uh, fall into a very difficult uh, uh, place if the U.S. and China uh, seriously uh, go to head, head to head on the uh, economic uh, conflict. So uh, create a new fund to do the research on uh, the AI, quant quantum computers, life science, space, and the ocean. Okay, so these are the four pillars on the uh, growth strategy, uh, growth part of the um, of the um, uh, uh, his um, uh, his um, uh, the growth redistribution uh, virtuous cycle. Okay, so what he is doing is to create to have created this um, uh, council for realizing new capitalism at uh, cabinet uh, secretariat and they have met uh, three times already and um, uh, try to come up with a concrete um, uh, concrete um, uh, policy measures so uh, the, uh, the in the first meeting they set the agenda and um, uh, tone of the council, and I read those documents, all, all the documents, and um, uh, it says the growth is needed to earn revenues for redistribution. So growth comes first, that's good. Uh, and uh, redistribution is for growth in the next stage. So this is uh, uh, in interesting parts that we haven't heard from uh, in, in the abenomics uh, and so on. All right, so um, that's the uh, idea. Yes, growth comes first, then you, you have the funds to uh, redistribute. If wage will go up, then uh, 
So social security will be uh, beefed up, then uh, cons consumption will go up, and that goes to the next stage of the growth. So it makes sense. And um, uh, in the one uh, that, that they have the data uh, shown uh, in what the what the problem is, and uh, this is um, um, I, I show you two of the uh, uh, figures that is that was inclu included in the uh, do documents of this council. The one is that yes, the real wage has not been increasing in Japan at all. And all other uh, G5 countries are uh, experienced, have experienced the decent wage hike. So there's something wrong with Japan. Why wages are rising? And uh, corporations, uh, uh, although corporations are earning uh, decent profits, they're not, uh, uh, they're not distributing to uh, to uh, workers, that's the sort of hidden implication. Um, okay, so this is consumption. Consumption only went up slightly uh, over this um, um, thirty years, and at the bottom of the G five uh, countries. So these are the uh, figures distributed to the council members. Uh, uh, in the beginning of this um, uh, uh, meetings, okay. uh, but, but I'm not I'm not a member of this council, uh, but I, I see uh, many of my friends' name names in uh, in the council. All right, so that's the um, new capitalism in a very uh, 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 a brief summary of the new capitalism. So um, I, I think. Um, the, looking back, what happened in the last um, uh, two years since COVID started, right? And um, um, after, you know, five, six months since COVID started, that um, uh, Prime Minister Abe uh, resigned and uh, rather suddenly, then Mr. Suga uh, became the next uh, uh, Prime Minister. Yeah, this happened in uh, August, September of 2020. Okay. Then um, after one year, uh, Suga announced that he would not seek re-election as LDP president. And LDP president automatically becomes the prime minister, so that means that Suga expressed that he will resign from prime minister. Then um, after in LDP uh, president election that Mr. Kishida was um, uh, chosen as the next leader and defeating uh, uh, Mr. Kono and uh, Ms. Uh, Takaichi. And um, uh, then Mr. Kishida became Prime Minister in October uh, last uh, year. And since then he has been talking about this uh, new capitalism. And he won the uh, general election right after uh, he became uh, Prime Minister. Okay. So, I'd like to uh, make a brief um, uh, uh, so description of how COVID played a important roles in politics and also economics. So, this is a story of the last two years. And um, I would argue, so this is my view, uh, I would argue that COVID played a, in, uh, you know, COVID contributed to the Abe's resignation and also Suga's uh, uh, not seeking uh, re-election. Okay, so um, Prime Minister Abe tried to, um, uh, so this is the first wave uh, in the spring of 2020, almost two, uh, two years ago, that uh, he tried to do uh, several things which didn't uh, get favorable reaction from the uh, from the public, and his uh, approval rating uh, went down uh, to the lowest of his um, 
uh, his seven-year uh, uh, tenure. Prime Minister uh, the Suga became a prime minister and, and tried to tackle the third wave of the um, uh, third wave and, and the fourth wave of the uh, COVID and um, uh, again not very successful from at least from the public's uh, view. So I would argue that COVID claimed those two prime ministers and that the, so Kishida, Prime Minister Kishida, how he handles this Omicron, Omicron uh, uh, spread is uh, uh, very uh, crucial for his, uh, for his um, uh, uh, the Prime Ministership um, um, popularity and the next election, which is coming in July, the House of Councillors uh, election. Okay. So, or, or, you know, it is very difficult to make a balance between uh, socio-economic activities and um, uh, suppress the uh, COVID um, uh, infection uh, 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 pandemic. Uh, and that shows in the economic data like uh, GDP consumption and unemployment. So, um, we, we have the spectrum of the COVID policies from basically uh, no restriction uh, in Sweden to zero corona uh, in, in China. And US and Japan are somewhere in between. Okay? And um, uh, what is noted, I, I, I will show you the data is that um, uh, uh, in Japan that um, infection rates and the death rate are very low compared to the US and, and Europe. Uh, but still this uh, um, uh, uh, affect uh, the um, um, uh, problem happened in, in politics that um, uh, compared to the US, you know, the problem is so much smaller but it is the, the 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 problem political problem is as big as uh, the united states now uh, also another note is the um vaccination and i will show the data that the vaccination started late but caught up with the us in uh six months again the booster shot started very late and um, this is bad for fighting uh, the Omicron uh, uh, spreading. Uh, and um, uh, now, now the, right now, you know, this week, uh, Japan is uh, facing very tough problem from Omicron. And part of the problem is that um, uh, the rate of the booster shot is still very low. Okay, so this is the um, uh, infection and Japan uh, here is uh, one tenth of uh, of the scale. So when when they uh, cross, they meet, which means that Japanese infection rate uh, per population is um, uh, is uh, one tenth of the United States. Okay, so there 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 is um, correlation of the uh, waves. And uh, now we are uh, seeing that U.S. already peaked and uh, Japan is um, uh, about to peak, uh, they hope. Okay, death is 1 40th of the United States, basically. So around here, it's, um, uh, Japan is uh, death rate is uh, 1 40th of the U.S. It was much lower, like 1 60th. Uh, in uh, uh, in two years ago, but now it's um, uh, settling around one fortieth. So uh, point is that uh, just looking at the number of infection to death, uh, Japan looks better, uh, much better. Vaccination started three months late, uh, and um, uh, but they did really well. Uh, in, from June to a September 
to the um, end of um, uh, end of last um, uh, year. Okay, so it crossed the around mid uh, September. So I would give you know credit to uh, accelerate uh, uh, the vaccination to Prime Minister Suga and um, uh, Mr. Kono, who was in charge of the uh, securing uh, vaccines and distributing to the um, uh, to the um, uh, local uh, 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 m municipalities. Okay, so this is the vaccinate, fully vaccinated, which means twice, right? Two shots, or in case of a JJ, once. But the fully vaccination, you know, Japan looked good in, in, in November last year until the Omicron came. Now, uh, this is the um, uh, newly infected per day, which in Japan, uh, and uh, Abe's resignation was in the middle of the uh, second wave, and Suga's uh, resignation came the um, uh, early September last year, and this rise um, basically costed, cost him in, uh, uh, in uh, uh, approval rating. Okay, now we have to see how Mr. Kishida will do in the approval rating uh, by handling the Omicron. So uh, this is, remains to be seen. Okay, so this is the uh, approval rating and uh, black is um, um, support. Uh, uh, so approve, approve, I didn't show you. So this is uh, approve. So went down to the mid thirties, uh, which was the lowest in uh, Mr. Abe's uh, tenure of uh, seven years. And Mr. Suga started a very high approval rating, but came down and down and down and uh, very low. Uh, and this probably uh, is a very uh, disappointing him, him and did not seek the re-election. Kishida started reasonably high and still going up. So um, uh, it's, it's um, a bit unusual that, uh, you know, honeymoon was not there, but it's um, approval ratings uh, increasing. But again, from here, how it goes uh, as Omicron uh, goes uh, is, um, is uh, re uh, um, remains to be seen. Okay. Right. So this is booster shots. Okay. So this is a concern. I, you know, a concern and challenge for uh, Mr. Kishida handling the Omicron. So booster shots uh, started only in November last year in Japan, it's still below 5% of the population. The U.S. is already above 25%. Okay? So whether Japan will accelerate like um, uh, two shots, uh, what, what happened uh, uh, in the last year, or n doesn't happen, it depends on how uh, Mr. Kishida will, uh, will uh, secure the uh, uh, vaccines and the booster shots and um, distribute to the uh, municipalities. So this is very important, I think, uh, for his uh, uh, approval rating uh, going on. Now, COVID also um, in, uh, make um, um, impact on the uh, economy. And this is a, a GDP growth rate. Uh, and J Japanese, you know, third wave or, you know, surge uh, or fourth wave um, directly hit the GDP and the negative growth rate happened. And uh, this, um, this is actually, uh, the Japanese fourth quarter is not, uh, has not been announced but this is a um, uh, forecast by Daiwa Research Security, um, Daiwa Research Institute. 
and uh, it should be good because the uh, fourth quarter the Japanese um, activities are very high and uh, infection was very low. So that is will be reflected in the GDP. So again, going forward in 2022, will depend on the how bad uh, or not so bad the Omicron uh, will be and the economy depends on that. Okay, so you, you could see that this is a first um, uh, wave and um, uh, V-shaped uh, recovery in the second quarter and third quarter of uh, 2020. Okay, so in a sense, the recovery looks very slow in, in Japan. Now, this is a different way of, of uh, looking at the recovery. And uh, this is a level of real GDP. And US is, you know, almost straight line and um, uh, V-shaped recovery will bring the US economy to the trend line. Uh, you know, pre-COVID -pre peak was already passed and going back to this trend line, which, you know, US looks uh, reasonably, uh, uh, good in uh, uh, achieving the recovery. Japan, unfortunately, is not, um, it's, if, if the um, uh, recovery in the fourth quarter is good, as predict, uh, as forecasted uh, uh, by forecasters, then it go, goes back almost to the pre-COVID peak. But, you know, if there, there's a trend line it's still way off the trend line. So in that sense, you know, Japanese recovery is weak. And this goes to the, you know, the restrictions on activities uh, on, and um, that cost the uh, Japanese, um, uh, Japanese economy. All right, so, why, why the you know low infection and death didn't result in robust recovery? And um, I think the answer is that the hospitals were not well managed, or government didn't manage hospitals uh, well. And uh, there are too many uh, mid-sized private hospitals who refuse to uh, uh, give the uh, beds to the COVID uh, patients. Why the vaccine started so late and again for the booster shots? And this is the Minister of Health, Labor and Welfare uh, was uh, reluctant to, um, to recommend or certify vaccines. And this is in general, not just the COVID. There's a long history, which I, I don't have time to go into. And um, um, regulations uh, on uh, who can administer the shots is uh, very, uh, very uh, strict uh, in Japan. Basically, only doctors can uh, uh, give the shots. So you have to get the volunteer doctors to uh, administer shots, which have been very difficult. That's why the Mr. Kono uh, and Mr. Suga mobilized uh, self-defense forces to, uh, to give um, uh, vaccine shots and um, so these are the so, sort of the I would say the problems of the uh, Japanese uh, fighting against uh, uh, COVID. Okay so um, the Omicron is now the um, big issue and whether the same mistake uh, is uh, repeated or Mr. Kishida can come up with the, some clever way of balancing between the economy and uh, COVID uh, uh, remains to be seen. Okay, so um, in the new capitalism, conspicuously absent is a traditional macroeconomics or uh, macroeconomy uh, um, policy measures like monetary policy, fiscal policy and trade policy. It's not um, uh, mentioned at all or mentioned uh, very little. Okay, so I don't have the time to go into the details uh, of um, 
I use uh, almost allocated time. So uh, let me point out just two, uh, two, three, three figures. Okay. All right. So um, this is um, CPI, um, uh, inflation rate, and Japan has. This is from 2013. So this is all Abenomics years. And you know, reasonably, in uh, it's in the positive territory, so it's not, not deflation anymore, except those um, uh, months in uh, 2021. U.S. was reasonably high, just below two percent, but around two percent after that, and now it goes to seven percent. So the debate in 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 the U.S. is that whether uh, Federal Reserve is behind the curve or not. And one way to, I have a, um, so I wrote um, a column in Japanese, I'm sorry, it's, it's only available in, on, in Japanese. But um, I argued that Federal Reserve is not behind the curve. And the uh, uh, reason is that uh, uh, the US is um, uh, emphasizing as a policy uh, target, the PCE, the um, uh, p uh, pr price in indicator and looking at, you know, this is a 2% line, increase line. And yes, the CPI already broke that 2% line, but PC is still below 2%. So what if I write the same graph in Japan? And I start from 2013 when the inflation target was adopted. This is two percent line. Now Japan is way off from the two percent line. So if you seriously think the average inflation targeting or two percent price level targeting is a right framework, then there is way um, uh, there's a long distance to get to two percent. Which means that probably uh, even if the uh, Japanese inflation rate uh, will go up this year, um, monetary policy will not, monetary policy will not uh, change. So there, there is some talk on the monetary policy, but I, I don't think there will be any change in the monetary policy. Okay, so I don't have time to talk about this. Fiscal policy, okay. So uh, Japan did um, fair amount of stimulus. US is also did a fair amount of stimulus. Now, can you uh, withdraw fiscal stimulus uh, once the COVID is, um, is uh, attained? So this, is, uh, this bar is the new issues of JGB. And um, uh, that went shot up uh, in the uh, COVID um, uh, uh, year and it's now coming down a little bit, uh, well, uh, significantly. And um, uh, if this can be done, then uh, uh, fiscal situation will be a sustainable, I would say. Okay, so that's all I wanted to say. Sorry, I uh, uh, spoke a little bit too long, but um, I will be happy to uh, engage in question and answer, David. Great, thank you so much, Taka. That was a that was a great presentation. You covered an enormous amount of uh, material, and uh, it was all really interesting. And um, I have lots of questions, and there also are lots of questions um, from the uh, from 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 the audience as well. Let me. I I, I want to start. Um, I mean, there were many things that you 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 touched on. Um, I want to start um, by. Uh, Kind of in the order of of what you covered, and and you began talking about uh, Kishida and uh, his policies. And one of the things that struck me relative to Abe, especially the Abe the second time, uh, the second Abe government, um, is that when Abe came in, he 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 seemed to realize that prime ministers can only do a limited number of things, and he had 
his three arrows and that was a very effective communication tool. Mm -hmm. um, I lost track of the number of policies you were talking about, but it sounded like on the order of something like uh, you, you, you had four growth strategies, which each had a number of different components. Mm -hmm. And then you had something like four or five uh, redistribution strategies. Mm -hmm. It seems like it would be too much for any politician to get all of this through um, in any major way. Of all of those policies, if you had to pick one or two that you think he's actually going to be able to do, what do you think those would be? On the redistribution part, I think the wage increase, and he, he's putting a lot of pressure on the big business to give the wage hike. And he could say, you have, you, you have uh, record profit, you have accumulated all those um, uh, retained earnings, and why don't you give a wage hike? And it would be very difficult for the big business, at least in the first year, to uh, to give the uh, to to go with the government, so wage hike will be closely watched as the uh, success uh, measure of the uh, Kishida's government. Growth policy parts, I'm not um, I'm not so uh, certain, uh, but um, uh, he may he may feel this uh, garden city, digital garden city would be a best bet that it's it's um, achievable and um, if you put money to build this um, uh, 5g network yes he can do it and uh, a question is whether that really contributes to the growth of the whole all the communities in japan and and so, so actually, we're, we're talking about growth. One of the things that you covered that I thought was really interesting was the differential responses of the Japanese economy kind of uh, in the recovery period, right? So in the U.S., we're, we're having this boom. Uh, there's, a, there's a huge increase in demand. Uh, you know, it's hard for firms to keep up with, with, with all of the orders coming in. And one of the big, one of the striking differences between uh, Japanese policy and U.S. policy in the, in the COVID period, um, it was in one of your charts, but but I didn't have time to talk about it. Was that, you know, the U.S. policy, uh, you know, involved um, a lot of liquidation of workers, a lot of firing of workers, or laying mm -hmm. off of workers. Unemployment skyrocketed. And now firms are desperately tr scrambling to rehire workers, whereas in Japan, the policy tended to keep the workers employed in the same firms. Mm -hmm. uh, and then, um, you know, one story that's told is that that reduced dislocations and put lower pressure on, on prices. Mm -hmm. But you might have thought that would also uh, enable Japan to recover faster. Um, in the in the in the post pandemic period, but we didn't see that. So I guess one question is why? What accounts for the fact that 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 this policy that kind of enabled firms to, you know, hold on to their workers and therefore not have to find new workers, you know, as as, as restrictions eliminated were eliminated? Why can't they produce more? So um, I think there are two answers to that. One is that um, uh, they haven't uh, got the opportunity to utilize those um, uh, holding uh, uh, workers uh, because the, again, the Omicron is uh, putting all the activity restrictions and uh, Japan believes in this um, hypothesis that uh, all the, the uh, infection comes from talking loud to each other, drinking <laughs> alcohol. So they closed down the um, restaurants and, and, and banning the serving the alcohol. And that's the way of uh, restrictions that's happening again. So the first quarter of this year, the GDP consumption uh, will be miserable. So uh, that is a way to restrict the activities is, is uh, biased against uh, this, um, uh, uh, this uh, restaurant business. So um, they haven't got the uh, benefits of uh, hold, holding uh, workers. Two is that they may be missing 
the uh, medium term structure change of uh, going to more remote work and more delivery instead of the eating in and uh, uh, maybe they are creating a zombie so um, you know may, you know it, uh, there are good points and bad points of the US of the firing workers and calling back and, and uh, not enough coming back but you know Japanese um, uh, uh, Japanese way of holding workers may be also um, uh, de detrimental uh, if there is a new normal is different from old normal. Um, so I want to, I want to give uh, some of our audience members a chance to uh, ask questions. And I have a question here from uh, one of our uh, Columbia Business School students, uh, Jackson Boone, who asks, um, how will Japan address demographic constraints uh, to remain um, uh, a dynamic economy. So the, the demographic issues are, are continuing. How is Japan going to deal with those? Yeah, that's very good. A very good question. And um, the this COVID crisis um, uh, aggravates this um, uh, problem by you know restricting the foreign workers coming into Japan. So the labor shortage uh, in the area of the jobs which uh, foreigners are taking. Uh, have taken uh, uh, in the last um, uh, you know five uh, seven years since uh, Abe came in. Um, so um, uh, demographic uh, constraint has become um, uh, has become uh, severe, and uh, in the medium run to uh, long run, I think the uh, Japan has to uh, cope with this um, by. Uh, uh, increasing a uh, participation rate of women, participation rate of the elderly, and um, uh, and um, uh, come up with the policies to to increase the uh, increase the number of babies and um, uh, encouraging couples to um, have you know, feel comfortable having baby or more babies. So that that's that's the very basic way of tackling the uh, uh, demographic, you know, oh, robots are another solution. And there are a lot of robots talking to the elderly uh, in the <laughs> old folks home and so on. Let, let, me, let me switch gears a bit. Um, we have a, we have a, uh, a, a, a um, question from a former colleague of yours and actually a former CJEB fellow here, uh, Etsuro Shoji, um, who's asking about uh, one of the charts that you showed about, which I thought was really interesting. And there are a number of, of questions in the, in the, in the, um, in the, in the Q&A section about this, right? You, you showed this chart about uh, US inflation, the trend in US inflation being 2% and that we're just kind of, uh, with the last bout of inflation, uh, CPI is just crossing that that line, and uh, the PCE is 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 approaching that line. Mm -hmm. um, but when we looked at Japan, which I thought was really interesting, uh, we didn't see um, uh, uh, prices coming up to 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 the to that uh, to that trend that that earlier trend that we had in the data. So deviating. Um, deviating. <laughs> yes, it's deviating. Um, and I guess there's a question now about, you know, um, will will or should the BOJ um, raise rates uh, given that, right? Um, and, you know, one of the other questions that kind of, I guess there's a perennial question and we, we, we've talked about this many times is, you know, given, you know, um, the enormous accumulated Japanese government debt, and this has just gotten even bigger in, in, in the wake of this um, uh, response to COVID. Um, how do you see this playing out? Um, you know, like to some extent, you'd think Japan would be ripe for having a lot of inflation, and yet, um, you know, we see po the possibility of inflation, but we haven't actually seen the, the, the numbers really move up a lot. And, and how do you think the BOJ is going to respond to that? Yeah, so it's a narrow path that um, uh, you cannot have a sudden increase of inflation that would affect the uh, interest rate and, and um, uh, that will cause the financial 
instability. Yeah. But um, uh, if you continue the uh, this um, uh, policy of um, uh, easing uh, forever, then uh, uh, that will accumulate. The that, that makes the size of the problem you have to deal with in the future gets bigger and bigger. Right. But solution now. Narrow path is that uh, you have to gradually increase the inflation rate and gradually increase the uh, interest rate. So normalization in slow speed, and um, uh, that that's I think is the only uh, only solution. Well, I'm going to turn the gears a little bit and just um, talk to something. Talk, ask you a bit about something that you alluded to. Uh, but you didn't have time to talk about in your in your, in your remarks, which is uh, Japan's trade relations with its partners, and especially, mm -hmm. um, uh, you know, we see with 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 RCEP coming on stage, and also you know we're we're seeing tensions with China that that uh, if they're not getting worse, they're not getting better. Let's say that mm -hmm. um, they're certainly not getting any better, uh, or, 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 or or relations there. How do you see kind of Japan's role in international uh, uh, trade policy change under Kishida? Um, and um, where do you see things going? So, uh, Prime Minister Kishida and Foreign Minister Hayashi, uh, some observers are saying that they are more uh, more uh, friendly friendlier to China than the Mr. Abe or um, uh, his his associates but I think they are keenly aware of that uh, uh, criticism and also they're keenly aware that uh, what the US is uh, uh, is intending uh, the US intends to to do and um, uh, they, they, the uh, Japan doesn't want to be in between the two big giants fighting uh, uh, each other. So they try to find, I think the Kishida and Hayashi try to find the ways to be friendly but not too friendly uh, uh, to China. Uh, try to press the, uh, try to deal with application to uh, TPP-11 by China and Taiwan somehow, uh, uh, somehow skillfully, maybe postponing until U.S. comes back to uh, uh, TPP. They're praying, and um, uh, so trade is uh, uh, yes a difficult uh, uh, question. But the re uh, talking about this uh, resilience of the supply chain and um, uh, and, and uh, economic security means that I think Kishida is ready to, uh, to uh, go maybe one step uh, toward um, uh, independence uh, from those uh, real, too much reliance on China, on the key, key products and technology. And, and let me just ask one last um, uh, question, just, just kind of just to sum up on, on Kishida and his policies. <laughs> you know, on the one hand, He's, he, he, he seems to be pursuing, um, you know, so, so in, in many ways you may think that this policy that you're talking about um, with, with raising wages is mm -hmm. going to be, is kind of a left-wing policy. I guess it's left-wing unless it also yields higher prices. Um, and then maybe, maybe it doesn't, uh, doesn't do that much. Do you see that Kishida represents a big change for Japan, or is it, it, or is it more? You know, should we be expecting that most of this is not going to get implemented, and uh, he's going to look more at the end of the day? You know, in in, in a year's time, it, we'll think of him more like a Suga uh, prime minister than a than an Abe type prime minister. Well, certainly the rhetoric is very different, and. Um, uh, the image he projects uh, is very different uh, from uh, uh, two prime ministers who uh, uh, preceded uh, him. 
So, um, but but the actual policies, whether they are uh, similar or different, remains to be seen. And my guess is that it cannot be so different. I, I don't think a revolution, uh, good or bad, uh, would not happen under Kishida. Well, I'm 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 very sorry. We have a lot of a lot of questions still in the uh, Q and A section, but. Um, Unfortunately, we are we are completely out of time, uh, and uh, so I just want to thank everyone uh, for joining us for what was just a, an amazing talk. I don't know, Taka, how you keep uh, delivering these. It's you know every talk, every time I go to one of your talks, I I learned so much, and uh, this was no exception. Uh, so I just want to thank um, our uh, thank thank you for uh, what was a great uh, great presentation. And um, uh, we all, I think, learned a lot about this new capitalism in Japan uh, and uh, the, the Japan's economic future. And I just want to end by also thanking our corporate and individual sponsors uh, for all of your support uh, during these very tough times. Uh, it means a lot to all of us, and I think it means a lot to our audience as, as well. So thank you. And, uh, and lastly, thank you uh, to the audience for, for joining us. Uh, and everyone uh, stay safe.